question more. Go behind the Iron Curtain USA. recent history, we have had the advancement of these failed policy, the project for a new American century. That is the... You already know there are a bunch of neocons running that show. They actually opened up an office in 19, uh, 1997. They closed their office in 2006. That doesn't mean they're gone, and that doesn't mean they're not influencing most of the politicians in Washington, but believe me, they're losing steam. Right now, the wars that have been fought in these 10 last years has given us $4 trillion worth of debt, are unpopular, we can't afford them, the American people want us out, and they want to bring the troops home. But there has been so many times that the young people, not only those of voting age, but sometimes 13 and 14 and 15, they bring their parents to the office and, and have them converted into believing and understanding about what liberty is all about. The young people energize a lot of other people and give the energy to the remnant who, believes, who are with us already. So this to me is exciting with the energy that we have. It seems to me that they would be begging and pleading for us to come into the party. You know, most people in this room probably have read that uh, book called 1984. It was required reading in high school uh, uh, for, for so many years. And, uh, you know, I figured it out. I can explain to you where the problem is. Uh, 1984 has been read by lot. I would assume everybody in this room read it as a dire warning of what could happen to a society if you're not careful. I think a bunch of people read the book and thought it was a business plan, and they ran for Congress. Because <laughs> so many claim they read it, and uh, they, they claim that they understand this, and yet they do the very things that we have been fighting against and trying, uh, trying to stop. During the campaign, I got a lot of advice. Can you believe that? A lot of advice, sometimes, sometimes from strangers, uh, sometimes from our enemies sometimes from my family as well. <laughs> but no, the, uh, but the advice that came up from the very well-meaning uh, individuals who were in the category of maybe mainstream Republican, and they would come up and say, Ron, we really like you. We like what you're doing, and we like what you're saying. But if you would only do one thing, if you would change one thing, boy, you would really have a lot more success. You need to change your foreign policy. And of course, and of course, if I didn't have the same, the policy that I do have, I don't believe we would be here tonight. And this, and this is something they obviously do not understand. Those who do understand it fear it because of the uh, powerful special interests behind a foreign policy of intervention in the military industrial complex. So it's complex, but they strongly resent this. But it was mentioned already today. I have mentioned it before, but I think it's the best test of my support coming from, more so than anybody else, from the military for our foreign policy. In the other area that we have created a lot of problems for ourselves, and, but we're in the midst of a transition, and that is in, on foreign affairs. We're spread 
too far around the world. We're in 140 countries. We have 900 bases. They're preparing right now to go into Syria. And it probably won't be too long that we may well be in Iran. We don't need another war. We need less wars and we need to quit. One, one, of the, uh, one of the strongest things that we have to deal with, of course, is the foreign policy as a consequence of the tremendous fear about being attacked by a terrorist. Now, t the terrorism is a serious, serious, serious uh, subject to deal with, and if you understand the blowback mechanism, of course, uh, we think we can do a whole lot uh, to reduce the threat of terrorism. But right now, uh, the threat of any of us being killed by terrorists about one in 25 million. The odds of getting killed by a car is one in 19,000. Lightning, one in about five million. But guess what? If you're in the military and you have to go over and get involved in a shooting battle to save the world for democracy, make the world safe for democracy, and bring peace and tranquility to these countries, Guess what? The estimates are, and there's no, no precise number, but it's somewhere between 2 and 20 per 100 people, like 2% to 20% that you will be killed by friendly fire. What a tragedy. And they think that we have to, we have, to have a drone warfare, constant. Every country, anybody who suggests they dislikes us will send out drone missiles. And uh, guess what? That does not win friends. It does not, not help us in any way whatsoever. It has been said that uh, they were very pleased that we were over there. It was much easier killing us over there than needing to come over here where the Second Amendment is still alive and well. distinguish him or herself from the other two candidates right now, that candidate happens to be me, okay? And I recognize, I recognize that each and every one of you would be doing what I'm doing right now if given the opportunity, but I've been given this opportunity and I'm trying to make the most out of it. So in the general election, I'm going to talk about three candidates because only three candidates are going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. But I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to stop foreign aid where we have poor people in this country giving foreign aid to rich people in other countries. I'm going to be the only candidate that does not want to bomb Iran. to get out of Afghanistan now, bring the troops home. Stop our military interventions. I am outraged, outraged by politicians that beat their chests against the terrorist threat and that comes at a cost of tens of thousands of innocent people being killed in foreign countries and it results in our men and service women coming back in body bags or with their limbs blown off. This has to stop and it has to stop now. to repeal the Patriot Act, and I would have never voted for it in the first place. I would never have signed the National Defense Authorization Act allowing for you and I, as U.S. citizens, to be arrested, detained, without being charged. This is why we fought wars. I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to end the drug wars. Legalize marijuana now. Question.
go behind the Iron Curtain USA.